Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's interview. Uh, we are talking with Shauna Robinson, two-time Charlotte Daytona Dash Series Most Popular Driver, as well as first woman to win a pole in the Xfinity Series. Shauna, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Brandon. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on. Um, so to, to begin things, many uh, current fans... Uh, they see the support that Danica received um, and also the support that Haley Deegan has received uh, since coming into the sport. But during your time, things were a little different. Tell us a little bit about what it was like for you as a woman trying to enter the sport. Well, yeah, it was a definitely different time. And I came into NASCAR in the late 80s. Um, I had been racing uh, in the Midwest and Northeast in the big semi-trucks, which nobody was really familiar with, but I got a lot of experience through that and then uh, went into NASCAR in 88. And, you know, when I went in, I, I I was never really thinking like, oh, I'm a woman in a man's world. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking that I'm progressing in what I want to do and I want to do it the best that I can do it. And... I would say starting out with the dash cars in um, 88 with uh, a really good team that I was placed with, with David Watson racing out of Boone. And, you know, they, they 100% supported me. And we we had consistency because we ran f two full seasons. So, I mean, basically every time we went to the track, we were, we were a threat. We were somebody that was going to be competitive and we knew it. Mm -hmm. And that was, it was just like, I never climbed in the car thinking I'm a I'm a woman. I just climbed in the car thinking I'm a driver. And yeah, there are the aspects of of course there's always trust issues like are they gonna go up you know, on a speedway like a Daytona or Talladega, mm -hmm. are they gonna go with you? Well, I'll tell you what, they're gonna go with you if you have a good car and you're moving forward, they're gonna go with you. They're gonna be skeptic about it or skeptical about it, mm -hmm. but I think once that you kind of prove yourself in that in that world, and so in the dash cars we had that. Now when I moved into the Bush series, which I would say that I probably moved too soon because I left a consistent situation and went into partial seasons, mm -hmm. and that's what any driver that isn't running full time and is trying to compete with everybody that is running a full schedule, you know, it's like you're on a treadmill and you can never catch up mm -hmm. because every race that you don't run and they do, they've got that much more on you. So it was always kind of a, uh, you got to catch up to get where you are. And so it, it was something to where honestly drivers were pretty decent there, there were definitely the few that were like, didn't think you had a reason to be out there. But let me tell you, after coming out of the trucks, there, that was easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, those guys definitely didn't think I had a reason to be out there, and they were very vocal about it. There were the good ones, and then there were the ones that were just like, you need to be in the kitchen with an apron <laughs> on, or you have to, you know, it's just, it was ridiculous. But that's the era of what it was then, mm -hmm. and... You know, now you spoke of Danica and Haley. You know, Danica came in being a proven driver in the Indy Series. Um, I mean, I know her personally. I don't know that at the time when she moved into NASCAR, that was really her first choice. Mm -hmm. I think that um, if it wasn't for Kelly Earnhardt, who is an amazing, amazing person, she wouldn't have probably did what she did mm -hmm. kelly's really the one who brought her in and then convinced dale jr and and those people to support her and get her out there and you, she ended up going in with tony stewart with an excellent team an excellent situation um and of course an excellent sponsor with GoDaddy that supported her 100 mm -hmm. percent. and it was a different time uh as i mentioned before social media is wasn't around when I was racing and yeah. the fact that it was, and I'm not saying that just as a way for a driver to support themselves. It's more as the, the avenue of the outlet of people knowing who you are mm -hmm. and basically knowing that you're out there. And, you know, she definitely held her own and did, did a great job. And, and Haley's being brought in 100% the right way yeah. with the backing 
now a Ford, but coming in with the backing of Toyota and then having Ford supporting her. And I just hope that, that they, um, this, they keep the consistency that she's accustomed to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she just, it's seat time. She runs out there and she wins races, which I definitely think she's going to do. And then moves up to the, to the next spot. Yeah. Um, so which drivers did you look up to, um, growing up, um, like in NASCAR or outside of NASCAR, local tracks, what were some of the people you looked up to and thought, man, I, I want to be like them or I want to race against them one day. Well, this is definitely going to show my age, but it wasn't really based on my age. It was more based on my dad. Mm -hmm. And my dad was a, a driver in USAC and late models and uh, grew up in the Midwest. And uh, But one of his favorite drivers was A.J. Foyt. And so I really liked A.J. Foyt. And mm -hmm. I loved him because, to me, he was the the he Tony Stewart is the A.J. Foyt later. Mm -hmm. He he could run on any kind of a track, whether it be an indie, a pavement, a dirt, it didn't matter, and he, he was just a hardcore driver. So he was probably one that I looked up to, but as I moved in to NASCAR and uh, had more, I'd say, mentors mm -hmm. in that the people that I knew I could walk up to and say, hey, I just can't get into one, you know, I'm just struggling on one. I'm good coming off of two, I'm good going in three but i am struggling with one davy allison he was so he was like a brother he was just so nice and that was at the time that i was racing for polaroid mm -hmm. and they kind of developed a relationship with him and so he, we would be at the track and uh practice or or qualifying or whatever and he'd be on the radio in the headset with me and he he really helped me get to that point and you know other drivers like like you'd Brandy LaJoy, mm -hmm. uh, Ron Hornaday, you know, they were people that you could come up and talk to as a driver, not like you're coming to talk to like, oh, I'm the girl. And yeah. It, it wasn't, there were definitely those that I wouldn't go ask for information because mm -hmm. they would probably give me the opposite of what I needed to hear. <laughs> yeah. But you, you just kind of grew and do that. But I'd say growing up, you know, we grew up around sprint car racing and, and I was a huge fan of Dave Blaney, who you look at Ryan Blaney now and it's like, oh my God, mm -hmm. it's like that they, they see, to see them out there and, uh, you know, Casey Elliott and oh, it just makes you feel a little old, but you know, <laughs> we're all getting there in my era too. I'm just thrilled that, that fans are still loyal. I, mm -hmm. I, I have amazing fans that st I, I still get fan mail and that just <laughs> makes me smile and um so I, I you know i'm proud of of what i did i'd say that i definitely helped open doors mm -hmm. and um i also very much uh respected lynn st james of course janet guthrie mm -hmm. you know i i'm just amazed that it took what, 20 if my stats might be wrong it was either 21 years or 22 years from the time that janet ran the daytona 500 to when i ran that's that's mm -hmm. just crazy and then I think it was quite a few years later that Danica did. And now, you know, we have yet to see who the next one's going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, next question. As a Michael Waltrip fan, Aaron's was always one of my favorite sponsors to see, like, on the car, at the track and all. Um, I even went to my local Aaron's um, and was like, hey, do you got any Waltrip stuff? And they were like, who is that guy? So uh, <laughs> I loved Aaron's. Um, and I, researching for this, I had seen that, um, they had a, uh, relationship with you. What was it like having them as a sponsor? And from what I saw online, there was a few races that Aaron sponsored that you actually ran in Michael Waltrip racing equipment. Uh, what was yes. that, that, what was that like? Yeah. Aaron's, um, uh, Ken Butler's who was, uh, running Aaron's the CEO of Aaron's amazing person uh very much a racer and in it kind of a fan who had the ability to get involved with it as a sponsor mm -hmm. and he had a very good relationship with michael waltrip but my first um race with aaron's was uh the first winston cup race i ran that was in michigan and that was with um my owner mike michael Cranifus, who mm -hmm. i ran the arca series with and uh, that just making that relationship. And then we did move in with Michael 
uh, it was it was great to work with Michael. Um, I wish we would have done better and had you know better experiences, but you know racing for Michael was was a great situation and and you know we just it just wasn't again going back to the consistency. It wasn't a full deal. It was a oh we're going to do five races. So like I said that 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 puts a, a lot of pressure on you as a driver to be able to perform at the top when you're not running the same amount of races that everybody else is. Because back then, his, his like, uh, Bush cars, they were only running, what was it, like 10 or so races? Yeah. Yeah, in yep. a season. Yeah, so Aaron's was the one who really brought it together, and, and we did that, and then they did, uh, we did a few little truck races together, which was towards the end of my career, mm-hmm. and... And then I did some more bush races before I walked away, but um, that was always a good, a great sponsor, a great company to be associated with, and, and they treated me very well. Uh, so once you stepped away from racing, uh, your interior design business as well as Happy Chair started to find some success. What was it like having, you know, the one door close, you know, in, in NASCAR, but then having another one open with another thing that you were passionate about? Yeah, it's so funny that you phrased it that way. That, that's actually the the best phrased question for me because I'll tell you what my visual was. But mm-hmm. prior to that, I will say that um, I started the design um, before I started it in um, when I was pregnant with my son Tanner, who um, – I was pregnant. She was born in 96. And then Samantha, my daughter, was born in 97. So that was the two years out of racing. Well, through that whole time, I was going to Michael Waltrip and, and, and Buffy's house at the time that mm-hmm. I was doing all kinds of painting and faux finishing and aging cabinets and doing murals in the kids' rooms. It was just something that it was just word of mouth. But mm-hmm. it kind of started with... Um, Kim and Ernie Irvin, they were building in Mooresville at this time, and and basically they they hired me to come in and make the color slo- selections, the flooring selections, every, everything, and it just really grew with word of mouth. And then being in that that kind of family of racing where there's a trust factor there, mm-hmm. so it's kind of like I knew all the wives and and the drivers, and so I I went in and did. Um, all of that starting out and then um i don't want to be too uh breathy here or be too long answering your questions but um prior to in in 95 uh prior to all the times i was at the bush races and at the racetrack Mm -hmm. i would always approach james finch who jeff purvis was driving for the arca car um and then uh oh mark I just went blank on his name, but, um, his crew chief, I would always go over there and I said, man, if you guys would just give me the chance mm-hmm. to drive a good car. Cause I mean, they, Purvis would pretty much win any race he was in or mm-hmm. anytime James Finch brought a car to the racetrack, it was top quality. He, he held nothing back. And so I'd always do it. Oh, Mark Reno. I would always go up and say, just give me a chance, give me a chance, give me a chance. Okay. So it's off season in um 95 Mm -hmm. and in in early 95 well well, they were getting ready to go test daytona um and so mark reno calls me and he's like hey we're moving purvis up to the cup series and we're gonna go ahead and take an arca car to to um daytona Mm -hmm. do you want to come and test and it was I, i was just like okay can i call you right back I literally went to the store and bought five more pregnancy tests and I took them <laughs> and <laughs> I called him back because it had been almost a year that I was trying to get a ride and, mm-hmm. and Jeff and I had been married for two years and it was kind of like, well, I, I want to have kids. There's no question about that. I'm not saying I'm not going to drive a race car anymore. Mm-hmm. So I had to call him back and say, okay, Mark, you know how bad I've wanted this. And you, it, I said, but. And I, this was way early. I had just found out I was pregnant. So, mm-hmm. I mean, nobody would have known, but I knew, you know, mentally in my mind, I knew. So I said, okay, listen, I, I can't do it because I'm 
I'm pregnant. And he, it was just like calm silence. And he's like, well, hell, that's the first time I've ever heard that excuse from a driver. (laughs) So that's what happened. But then let me tell you in 99, they gave me the opportunity again. And I ran the Bob Evans car at Daytona for James Finch. And we finished second under caution. And Mm -hmm. That, I'll tell you what, I would have won that race or crashed. There's no, I had the car. The fact that we finished under caution killed me, but it did help. And then from that area, it brought me to Michael Cranifus, who put me in his equipment. And that's the time Jeremy Mayfield was driving for Pinsky. Mm-hmm. It was Pinsky Cranifus. So then uh, that built that relationship. So um, just the fact that I came back. So I was doing the design to get back to your question. I was doing the painting and design, but I mean, my heart was still 100% in racing. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, where I took it up until late 2005, maybe 2006 was my last race. And I I was in a a bush car situation with, I had Vassaret as sponsor, a great sponsor. Mm -hmm. But as far as the car owner, um, just we did not get along well. Uh, The equipment wasn't what I wanted it to be. I wasn't going to the track to just ride around. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to the track to be a starting park. And, you know, basically I'd like this, this isn't working out. And well, you know, if you lay, what are you going to do? Hang wallpaper for the rest of your life. And it it wasn't about that. It was just Mm -hmm. about that. Now, don't get me wrong. I wish, I I won't say that I wish at my age. Now I, I just wonder what if I would have, you know, through 2006, went and really pushed for a good ride and to get back out there. Mm-hmm. But it kind of put me to a point, and my, you know, my kids were getting, they were in, in uh, elementary, middle school, they were starting to play sports, and you know, I wasn't going to be away or at the racetrack if I wasn't there to be competitive. Mm-hmm. So I visually, for me to be able to to walk away from it was incredibly difficult it's not really what i wanted to do but i had to visually basically see myself closing this garage door like Mm -hmm. i just visually in my head there was like okay i'm closing this door and i'm opening another one and i i had a i think i get part of it from my mom who was very much into um decorating and antiques and all that kind of stuff and my dad was the my dad and brother were the racers Mm -hmm. and so I think I just embraced it to where just like I did with racing once I made the decision to be a racer a real racer that's all I lived eat breathed and then once I decided to get into that uh with the design that's when I created happy chair I was very much into fabrics and textiles and, and vintage fabrics and different looks that I started creating these one of a kind pieces. And, you know, it took off for a few years. I, I definitely had success with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then now I'm still doing design. I'm not as much doing happy chair unless it's a custom order, mm-hmm. but I'm doing um, many houses and projects and, and some commercial opportunities. So uh, that's just kind of how it happened. And I had to kind of shut the door but I'm still involved with the NASCAR. I'm on the Board of Appeals, which hasn't really been very active in these last few months. So <laughs> just now getting back out there, and I'm glad to see them back out there. But I still go to some races. I still decorate for a lot of the drivers, and it, it's just more of a relationship off the track in their family lives than it is on the track in a business aspect. Mm-hmm. That's that's awesome. That's um, I, I didn't know that you had driven the uh, the Bob Evans car that has become me and my dad whenever we go visit the race shops that's our go-to place we have to stop at so yep. and then i researched it and found out they had sponsored randy lajoy and i was like yep. oh that's so cool and now i'm like oh it's just it's cool when you see all these things connect together so it's just a yeah another point and like the fan of shauna robinson column so <laughs> that's so cool yeah randy was running the bush series when i was running the arca car mm-hmm with the Bob Evans deal with uh, Finch. Randy was running for Finch also in the, in the Bush series. So yeah, he was, he's cool. That, that guy's funny. Mm-hmm. He's a funny man. I'm, uh, glad, I'm glad to see Corey out there too. Yeah. 
Yeah, we um, when I was talking to uh, Randy, we had actually right when the pandemic happened, I went up to Charlotte to uh, interview Hunter Smith. He does a lot of um, training for different drivers, and um, we had went and filmed his interview at the Joy of Seating. So I got to just in passing yeah. say hi to Randy and at Go Fast Racing. Um, Corey was there, so we got to hang out with Corey for a little bit, and I was like. Man, it's awesome when you meet someone that you really pull for and you realize that they are genuinely an awesome person, you know, because yeah. you're always afraid they're going to be some kind of jerk and then you're going to think, oh, no, that's this sucks. Yeah, no, it's very cool. It's very cool to see that and to see it uh, come from the the history, you know, of his dad racing mm-hmm. and it just like to see Ryan Blaney and it just, uh, I love the sport because it's, to me, such an American sport. Mm-hmm. It's such a, you know, I was always a baseball fan, and there's nothing better than being at a baseball game and eating a hot dog and drinking a beer and watching a baseball game or having a Coke or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like, it just feels so real America, and that's that's to me what, what NASCAR has always been. Yeah, so so speaking of your um, your designs and all, do you have a project that you've worked on that stands out as your favorite, or do you have any dream projects for either you'd love to work with this person or at this place help design it? Oh gosh, you know I have a few, but I'll tell you my one um, in, in, my one true to heart is is Truex. Mm-hmm. Um, Sherry Pollux and I are good friends, but Sherry was little like her dad owned bush cars when i was running in with polaroid in the bush series and she was like a little girl that came to get my autograph and <laughs> it, it, it was just like and we've become really good friends and i've done so many things for truex i did uh, a remodel and then i did a new build i did his race shop um i did their home in florida um so i mean truex always stands out to me they're they're really cool people Mm-hmm. They do so much for children, for foundations. The Martin Truex Jr. Foundation is one of the top of the line. I've done the catwalk from day one, which mm-hmm. we just had our 10-year catwalk. This would have been our 11th year, but right now it's usually in May, and it's put off now until possibly October. Mm-hmm. But um, just being a part of of their family and they are very family focused i did martin's mom and dad's place in florida um i I just very i have very very whole just great Mm -hmm. great relationship with them and then there's the i mean i have to kevin ernie irvin's one who gave me a a start and from their Mm -hmm. house in mooresville they moved to south carolina and i did a house there and and then during my cancer I was uh, hired by Ray Evernham and Ray and Aaron and, and did a place for them on Amelia Island mm-hmm. while I was going through the final process of my cancer treatment. So I ended up doing all my radiation at the Mayo Clinic, in turn decorating and remodeling the condo for them. Wow. And I'll tell you what, that helped get me through it. Work mm-hmm. helped to get me through it. And, and also Ryan and Chrissy Newman, I did a lot of stuff for them. Uh, you know... I'm just a Boyer, definitely. Laura and Clint Boyer, amazing, did their new build, and um, still work with them a lot on projects. and And they're they're just so cool because I mean, when we would go, we, we I went to Texas because a lot of their their love was really rustic and and very one of a kind furniture. So well, during the Texas race, I went out there, and uh, Clint and Laura and I went out to all these stores and we purchased a lot in texas a lot of their lighting came from texas Mm -hmm. and then putting their house together so it's it's i'm I'm pretty very blessed and very grateful now i had read that you had done something at junior shop is that like the fan area or i did kelly's house i did junior's house this was prior to you know building a new one this was Years ago, but Junior's was one of the first race shops I did. And then from Junior's, I did um, Casey Kane's Sprint Car Shop. And then I did Martin Truex's uh, personal shop. And they're all on the same street. So I could justify that I have three shops 
right together that I did all the design for. And I'll tell you, you can go into Juniors right now, and it's exactly the same. They've yeah. added some stuff, but it still looks cool. And anything you could go, you know, 10 years back and say, oh, God, I, I want to change that. No, they it, it, it still looks awesome. Yeah, that um, whenever we would go up um, when I was younger, we still do it now, but you used to be able to hit – there was a bunch of little race shops over there on the other side of the interstate. You'd have like your Fitz Motorsports and your Braun and all. And then we'd go over there and we'd hit Juniors, then Casey Kane's, then Truex's. And then we'd, so. Yeah, that's off Talbert. That's, yeah. That's, I did all those shops. So I, I, I love that as a kid because I, I we got to the point, and I know my, my dad, he got to a point where he would just sit in the car because I'd be like, all right, we're going to hit because we, we drive up there in the morning then we'd come back at night so i'd be like all right we got like five hours yeah. we're gonna hit 30 race shops and so he would go into juniors but he'd be like all right i'm gonna go in these five and i don't even know who these other 25 people are <laughs> yeah uh, that's so cool that yeah that's um it's pretty cool to say and now sherry uh sherry does a lot of the uh, sherry strong mm -hmm. she does a lot of you know everything for ovarian cancer and she does a lot of live videos on instagram in fact, today she was doing one in her kitchen, uh, doing a recipe because people ask her, you know, like, what do you cook? How do you cook? Cause she's very, very health conscious. Yeah. And, um, so it's pretty cool to, to be watching the video and being like, Oh man, it look, <laughs> your background looks amazing. <laughs> Knowing that I created all that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, I, I've really appreciated you getting to join today. I feel like I, I love doing the research, but I feel like just Throughout the interview, it's been awesome to learn a lot of different stuff that I, I didn't know. So I've really enjoyed getting to chat with you. Well, I'm really um, I'm grateful that you sought me out and, and called to set this up and that we could get it done.